Hi there. Thank you for joining me once again in our study in 1 Peter. Today we are in chapter 2. We're going to start at verse 13 and go down to the end of verse 25. Peter is encouraging us here how to live in many different situations, even using Jesus as the example of how he reacted when he was in difficult situations, that we should do the same thing, that we should have a healthy fear of God, and that we should listen to those who have been given authority over us. The advice he has given us is very practical, real, everyday advice, and I think it will bless you today. Hi there, thank you for joining me once again in our study in 1 Peter. As I mentioned already, we are in chapter 2, starting at verse 13. Peter is encouraging us how to live our life, how to walk with the Lord and how to walk in this relationship with Him and with one another. So let's just jump right in. Verse 13, he says, Submit yourselves for the Lord's sake to every authority instituted among men, whether to the king as a supreme authority or to governors who are sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to commend those who do right. For it is God's will that by doing good, you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Live as free men. Do not use your freedom as a cover-up for evil. Live as servants of God. Peter has given us a great advice here, and he's telling us here how to walk in authority with the authority that is over us, how to submit ourselves to them. So whatever it is, if it's a government or authority, city authority, provincial, district authority, whatever it is, that we should listen to what they say and do what they say. Now, the only time that this comes in conflict is when they want you to do something that is directly against the Word of God. Then you need to take a stand because we are first to God and then to man, right? He's just encouraging us to walk in peace, to walk in listening to what they have to say to us as much as we can. Why is he saying this? Because we are the light, right? We are the light that is showing the world, the dark world, the light of God, the light that Jesus has deposited in us. And when we show that light by being obedient, then it makes a difference. In verse 15 that we read here, it says, For it is God's will that by doing good you should silence the ignorant talk of foolish men. Foolish men are going to gossip and talk all the time. But this is going to help you in that it will take away this ignorant talk. When we live as free men, do not use it to cover up your freedom as a cover up for evil. Live as servants of God. It's not okay to sin if you, nobody knows about it. Because God always knows about it. God is always with us. We are the temple of God. That means that we are the presence of God on this earth. So if we are the presence of God on this earth, if we are the temple where he abides, then wherever we go and whatever we do, he is with us. Even though it may seem like nobody knows what you're doing, nobody can see what you're doing or hear what you're doing, God is always with us. So we need to be careful, right? Do not use your freedom to cover up your evil. Amen? Verse 17, he goes on, he says, Show proper respect to everyone. Love the brotherhood of believers. Fear God and honor the king. This is a very powerful statement for us also. Show proper respect for everyone. You know, be considerate of people. Love the brotherhood of believers. It's easy to backstab. It's easy to talk about. It's easy to gossip. Those things are easy to do. But that's not what God is calling us to do. He's calling us to love one another, right? To be considerate of one another. He goes on and says, Fear God and honor the king. Fearing God is something that's very important for us. Not fear as in we're in a panic because something's going to happen to us, but a fear as a reverent fear for God. I remember listening to a man the other day who was talking about somebody who fell. I'm not going to use any names. They had a huge, huge ministry, worldwide ministry, and they fell and they ended up 
actually going to jail. And this guy visited him in jail and he said, so when did you stop loving Jesus? He said, I never stopped loving Jesus. And he said, well, how could you do all the things that you did if you didn't stop loving Jesus? He says, loving Jesus wasn't the problem. He says, I had no fear for God. And this can get us into a lot of trouble. Yes, we love the Lord. We need to love the Lord. But we also need to fear God. God is the creator of everything. Yes, he is a God of mercy. Yes, he is a God who desires for us to be with him and to walk with him. But he is also a jealous God who wants our love and wants our attention. If we are going to make a mockery of him by going and doing things that we know we shouldn't do, there's going to be consequences for that. Yes, Jesus paid for all of our sins on the cross, but that doesn't mean to say that sin doesn't have a consequence because sin does have consequences, just like the choices we make. That's one question that many people often ask if there is a God, why is there so much destruction? Why is there so much evil? Why is there so many problems in this world today? And it's because of love. Because love needs a choice. And so God put the tree of knowledge and good and evil in the center of the garden so that Adam and Eve would have a choice, so they could choose to love God. God will always honor the, our, our choice. He will always give us a freedom of choice and he will always honor it. He won't always like it. He won't like the choices we make but he will honor the choices we make. Even when our choices affect innocent people, like the guy who goes to the bar and gets drunk and then jumps in his car to drive and hits a family and kills the whole family, that's completely innocent. People will say, well, why didn't God protect him? Well, the only way he could protect him is to take freedom of choice from somebody else. And that doesn't work, right? So in order for us to make our choices properly, we have to have this fear of God. We have to have a reverent fear of God in our hearts. We, we need to want to do whatever we can to respect God and to show Him how much we love Him, how much we care for Him. Verse 18 goes on and says, Slaves, submit yourselves to your masters with all respect, not only to those who are good and considerate, but also to those who are harsh. Now, we don't have slaves so much anymore, but you can just kind of substitute this slaves to employees. Employees, submit yourself to your employer with all respect, not only to those who do good and consider, but also to those who are harsh. Again, God is giving us this direction. I think you can see a pattern of what Peter is saying here. He's saying, in all things, be considerate. In all things, love those who are around about you. Why? because that's what we're called to do, right? We are called to love one another. We are created to love and be loved. First, to love God and have him love us. And then secondly, to love one another and have one another love us, right? If you read the Gospel of John and even the other Gospels, Jesus says so many times to his disciples, love one another, love one another. If you read from John 13 to 18, which is the last few hours of Jesus's freedom, he is oftentimes saying to his disciples, love one another. He's really trying to stress to them to have a love and a consideration for one another. And this is the pattern that Peter has given us here. He's showing us here. Whatever our circumstances, let love flow from our heart. Even if we're in a bad circumstance, even if somebody is abusing us, even if somebody's not treating us well, have that love. Now that's not easy to do. It's not easy to love somebody who is not treating us well. It's not easy to love somebody who is abusing us or somebody who is mocking us or bullying us. But he gives us the ability to do that. And I found myself in situations where, because for all of us, there are people we just don't like. There are people that just rub us the wrong way. You meet them right away. And even before you started talking, you know, they just, they rub you the wrong way. And you know you're going to have a difficulty loving that person. What I do is I ask Jesus to love them through me. Because Jesus loves that person. Jesus loves everybody, right? If you ask him to love that person through you, then he starts doing that and it can change your heart and help you to walk the way that he's talking about here. 
Verse 19, he says, For it is commendable if a man bears up under the pain of unjust suffering because he is conscious of God. Just what I was saying here. It is commendable if we bear up even when things aren't going well and people are mistreating us. That we still have the same attitude, that we still love them, that we still understand that we are walking with God and not worrying about what man can do to us. Verse 20, it says, But how is it to your credit if you receive a beating for doing wrong and endure it? But if you suffer for doing good, you endure it. This is commendable before God. He says, it's not really that commendable if you're getting a beating because you deserve it. If it's a punishment because you've done something wrong. That's not a commendable thing. But if you have done what is right and you're still being beaten, that is commendable before God. That you've done what is right, you've been considerate, you've tried to do everything right, and still they falsely accuse you and punish you, then that is commendable before God. Verse 21, he says, To this you were called, because Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his steps. This is commendable because this is the example Jesus left for us. Jesus was mocked. He was... He was ridiculed. He had all these things happen to him the whole time through his ministry. And he stood there and took these things because he knew who he was. For us to stand and to take these things, we need to know who we are. We need to know that we are a child of God. We need to know that we don't allow these things to affect us and we don't allow them to affect us because we know who we are. We know that this earth is a temporary home. We know we're not going to be here long. We know we are graduating into something that is beyond what is here. So as Christ suffered for us, we also must be willing to suffer. Paul in his life and the difficulties he went through, he just calls them mere inconveniences compared to the glory of heaven. And his mere inconvenience is probably more than what most of us could take being stoned and left for dead and whipped a number of times in jail, uh, shipwrecked and all kinds of things that happened in his life. And he just calls them mere inconveniences compared to the glory that is for, for those who walk with the Lord. He committed no sin and no deceit was found in his mouth. This is talking about Jesus, right, from the last verse, that he was an example for us to follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin and no deceit was in his mouth. That's what he's telling us to do. Do not walk in sin and don't let there be deceit found in your mouth. Speak honestly, right? Verse 23, when they hurled their insults at him, he did not retaliate. When he suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, so that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. They hurled insults at Jesus, and he did not retaliate, right? When he was suffered, he made no threats. Instead, he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. Who did he entrust himself to? To the Father, right? Later, Jesus says in John 14, verse 1, he says, Do not let your hearts be troubled, but trust in God and trust in me also. He was talking to his disciples on the night that he was going to go into captivity, the next day he was going to die. And he's telling them, don't worry about what you see with your eyes. Don't worry about what's coming forward. Just trust God that he is going to do something. And this is what he's telling us, that we need to put our trust in God just as Jesus did. Because there is a just judge that is there for us. For you were like sheep going astray, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the overseers of your souls. We were like sheep gone astray. We were like sheep that were no longer walking with the shepherd. We were lost. The shepherd was not around to be found. And then he came to us and he, he took us back into the fold where we belong. This is a story of, of the whole of creation where we fell away at the Garden of Eden, yet God is there to lift us up and to bring us back into his fold. And that's an amazing thing. That's why he sent Jesus to us. He's the shepherd of shepherds. He's the one who has taken us as lambs, as sheep, and bringing us back into the fold that he would be the overseer of our souls. 
And we can rest in that and be assured in that and what a blessing that is to each and every one of us. Well, our time's over today. What a blessing it has been. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for these words. We thank you how Peter is encouraging us. Father, help us to put these words on our heart that we may walk with him and that we may know that Jesus has done all these things for us, that he's bore our sins in his body and that we are, are live for righteousness because of that and by his wounds we have been healed. Father, we are no longer sheep that are going astray, but we have a shepherd and overseer of our souls. For that, we are truly thankful. Father, for those who are lost today, for those who are wandering around looking for something, Father, we just pray that you would just touch them, that you would send somebody to share your word with them. Let the Holy Spirit hover over them and prepare them to receive the word. Father, we thank you for the opportunity we have to put this word out in the medium that we are doing so, Father, we pray it goes far and wide and touches many people and does not return void. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm looking forward to seeing you on our next session. Remember, God loves you and so do I. Okay, girls, take us home.